Yo, once again, it's on. We back at you one more again. Yeah, you know I mean, Real Kens TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like this video. Feel free to comment, share, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive it. Now, with no further ado, I like to get into the story. You know, living the life as a convicted felon can be uh, rather challenging. You know, and you have a lot of people out there that's not empathetic, not sympathetic, but empathetic, you know, because, you know, a lot of people want to be like, well, that's what you get for going to prison. Or, you know, that's what you get for breaking the law. You know, the thing about it is this. We all fall short and we all mess up. We all do things that we're not supposed to do. Some people, you know, cheat on their taxes a little bit. But if nobody's watching, nobody knows. Guess what? It's harmless. Some people cheat on their wives, cheat on their spouse. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of things that people do that doesn't necessarily land them in prison, but at the same time, it's not right. But yet people are so quick to judge you if you go to prison. Now, living the life of, of a felon, you know, it, it's, as I mentioned, is it's rather challenging. And so the story that I want to talk about is a true story as usual. I don't bring anything that's... Uh, not 100% genuine, you know, truthful. He was a young man, you know, he was out here living the life, you know, the fast life or what have you. And um, he has like five kids. And, you know, and that's not an excuse. You know, it's not an excuse that he has a lot of kids. And he was out here living the fast life, selling drugs, nothing hard, you know, no heroin or, you know, fentanyl or anything like that. Party drugs, you know, but nevertheless, he was breaking the law. He gets caught up, boom, gets sent to prison. When he goes to prison, he ends up doing, I want to say, three, three and a half years, and then he's released. Now, once he's released, he's determined, you know, I'm not going back to prison, you know, but at the same time, he was kind of like on the fence. So I guess I just kind of gave you oxymoron because I clearly said he was determined that he wasn't going back. But yet at the same time, he was on the fence. You know, when he came home, he didn't have anything. That's typically what happens unless you're married or you have someone that's in your corner that's going to make sure that, you know, all your personal belongings and things of that nature. You know, people don't run off and take it and take your money if you have any money, you know, your cars or what have you, you know. A lot of times you lose everything. So when he came home, he didn't have anything. He ended up having to move in with uh, his son and sleep in the basement. Didn't have anything. Didn't have a car. Didn't really have any clothes. Didn't have any money. You know, in Kentucky, they don't give you 200 bucks when you get out of prison. You just out. You know what I mean? They really don't even want to give you anything to wear. So no matter if you did 20 years straight, they don't give you no money or anything like that. You on your own. So, you know, he comes home and as I mentioned, he's sleeping in his son's basement and, you know, he gets a job, you know, he gets a job and he ended up getting a second job, I want to say. So he's working two jobs, you know, he's, he's washing dishes, you know, for a second job, you know, 20 hours a week, but he still doesn't have a car. So he's doing whatever he has to do to get back and forth to work, you know, catching a bus catching an Uber, kept catching a ride, walking sometimes, just whatever he needs to do. Now, COVID hits. The mother of his twin daughters, unfortunately, passes away. True story. You know, she had an underlying health condition. And, um, you know, once she caught COVID, she was never able to, you know, come out of it. So she passed away. Now, this young man, we're going to call him Jay. It's not his name, but, you know, that's going to be his name during this video, Jay. He felt the pressure, the, the, the pressure of life, you know, in his mind, he wanted to jump back out there and do the things that he knew would get him instant money. But at the same time, inevitably would get him time and send him back to the very place that he had just came from. So Jay decided, you know what, I'm going to try to do things differently this time. I don't want my kids in foster care. 
he didn't really have a whole lot of family that was willing to step up. I think his daughters were maybe nine or 10 at the time. So Jay continued to do what he did. Got him a place. Ended up getting him a car. Now, as a convicted felon that doesn't make a whole lot of money, even if you did make money, it's very hard to get anyone to rent to you. You know, nine times out of ten, you're going to be in the ghetto or you're going to have to find you a private owner that doesn't really, you know, too much care about your criminal history and your credit. Um, Jay's credit wasn't great. Like I said, he's a convicted felon. Um, so we found him a place. And when he got this place, he ended up getting a two bedroom because, you know, child services, they were in social workers. Um, they were involved because it's criminal history. So they had to come over and inspect the place, make sure everything was everything. Had to go through uh, intense drug testing, you know, even marijuana. Now, marijuana is legal almost everywhere else. But it's not legal in Kentucky. So, you know, he's getting drug tested and all of these things. I mean, it, it, it builds pressure because it's like if I mess up one time, my kids are gone. You know, my kids are gone to foster care. Jay was never faced with this before. He was never faced with this adversity before. After all, the kid's mother, she typically handled everything. You know, they would come over from time to time. You know, but as I mentioned, he did three and a half, four years in prison. The kids were only nine to 10 years old. So half their lives, he had been in prison. However, they were familiar with him. They did have a relationship. But, you know, the mother, you know, handled everything. The doctor's appointments, getting them back and forth to school. You know, um, he didn't have a car, so he couldn't pick them up. Just all the, the things that, you know, making sure that, you know, they, they're, they're fed at night. All the motherly duties mothers you all do a great job out there so let me you know i don't want to fail to mention that as well so jay found himself having to do all of these things now there was a, a situation that happened in the neighborhood to where something had happened to one of his neighbors so jay felt like he needed some protection so he goes and he gets a gun now Jay fully knows that he's not supposed to have a gun. He's a convicted felon. Think about being a convicted felon. It doesn't matter what your conviction is. It can be child support. It can be credit card uh, fraud. It can be writing checks. It could be stealing out of Walmart. It could be anything. If you're a convicted felon, not only can you not possess a firearm, you can't have anything that's considered a deadly weapon. Nunchucks, brass knuckles, uh, a knife in which the blade is over four inches. So essentially, they just want you out here. You can't protect yourself. You can't protect your family legally. So. Jay decides, no, nah, I can't have my daughters in this environment. And I have no way of protecting us. One night, Jay hears a loud noise at the door. He sleeps with his pistol, you know, pretty close to him. Someone had broken into Jay's home. It was roughly, I want to say he said right around 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, 12, 30, 1 o'clock a.m. So I guess technically it's not at night. It's in the morning. And... The guy has a gun. Well, you know, initially Jay didn't know that he had a gun, but you figure if somebody breaks into your house like that, you just assume that they have a weapon. Jay fires, ends up killing the guy. Police come, they do the report. Jay's speaking to the police, he's telling them everything. Well, Jay ends up going to jail that night, felon in possession. Of a handgun. Jay goes to jail. The daughters end up going with family. So they go with family or what have you. And Jay's in jail. Now let me tell you about Kentucky laws. Everywhere else that I know of. When you go to jail. You get an automatic 10% bond. 
So let's just say your bond's fifty thousand. It's ten percent to five thousand. If your bond's ten thousand, it's automatically ten percent to a thousand. Not in Kentucky. If your bond is ten thousand dollars, that's just what your bond is. Now, whenever you go to court, you can ask for a bond reduction. You know, if you're fortunate enough to be able to hire an attorney, he can go in and speak for you, he or she. But unless the judge reduces your bond, that's what your bond is going to be. So Jay remained in custody for about a month, you know, and his brother and, you know, they they had the kids. And um, he's fighting the case. And his attorney is telling him, like, listen, man, you know, I know what you're saying about protecting your family and your kids, but you shouldn't go to trial because we go to trial, man. I can't beat this. Where I fought Jay at, he was kind of stubborn and, and caught up in his own feelings, you know, and he decided to go to trial despite what the lawyer said. He goes to trial. He gets on the stand. He tells his story about, you know, when you go to the grocery store, you see people with guns. When you go to church, there's people with guns. When you go to the movie, there's people with, you know, with guns. Everywhere you go, people have guns on their hip. But yet, I don't have a right to protect myself and my family and my kids and my elderly mother and my family. Well, the thing about that is this. A jury had to find him guilty because the prosecutor showed that he was a convicted felon. So despite despite the fact that they may have been, um, you know, kind of feeling what he was saying, we have to go by the law. And the law says you're a convicted felon. You cannot possess a firearm or handgun. He gets five years. Then the sentence enhancement kicks in. So he gets an additional 15 years. Um, the prosecution, they were um, trying to convict him of murder. They charged him with murder. But then it ended up getting dropped down to a uh, reckless homicide. So we got 15 years. Um, good part about that. Nothing's good about getting 15 years, but he went up for parole, you know, in three years. So he gets the 15 years or what have you. His kids, he doesn't have his kids. You know, luckily they didn't have to go to foster care as he thought that they would. Um, the brother and the mother, they, they all chipped in and made sure that the twin girls were okay. And, you know, when I look back and I think about it, that guy's a hero to me. He's a hero to me. You know why? Because he did what he had to do to protect his family. No matter what the people said, nobody else was going to be there to protect his twin daughters. Just think if he didn't have anything that particular morning when he heard that loud bang or that loud noise in which someone was kicking in the door. His twin daughters might not even be here. He might not be here. So it's just one of those situations to where, like I said, he did what he had to do. Um, And just unfortunately, you know, with his, with his prior record, he got 15 years out of it. You know, oftentimes there's a saying, man, you're only the bad guy to the bad guys. So, yeah, they try to make it seem as though he was such a bad person and he had a criminal record and he, man, that guy made mistakes like everybody else. But as a man, as an adult, it's your responsibility to take care of your family. It's also your responsibility to be here for your family. And as I mentioned, if he didn't have that, we don't know. People are crazy. The guy that came in could have came in and killed everybody. Who's to say? To this day, he's back out. He's with his kids. Everything seems to be going well with them. Last time I spoke with them, you know, kids have, have grown up. They're happy that their father's out. And, you know, he learned his lesson from it. I don't necessarily want to say he learned a lesson from it. Because what lesson is there to learn? You know, he's in a better neighborhood now. But at the same time, you're still in a situation where you can't legally protect yourself, legally protect your family. Life is tough as a felon, and I'm not crying. I'm not sitting on here asking for sympathy. I'm not, I'm just giving 
you know, a lot of you all some insight. Because there's a lot of comments, you know, that people make and, you know, you shouldn't go to prison and prison ain't supposed to be fun. And that's what you get for going. And maybe next time you'll make better decisions. And maybe, you know, no person walking the face of this earth is perfect, including some of you all that are very, very judgmental. You are not perfect either. You may not break the law, but you do other things that are not necessarily on the up and up, you know? Used to be an Uber driver. A whole lot of married men that take these business trips are looking for certain things. Yeah, you know I mean, when they get to the hotel. And I'ma just leave it at that. Knowing that you married and you have a whole family at home. So don't get on here and act like you so perfect. You know, and, and like you're holier than thou. But nevertheless. That's just a story, one of the many stories that I have as far as people out here living the life of a felon. A whole lot of things you can't do as a felon. A whole lot of jobs you can't, you know, have. A whole lot of places you can't live. A whole lot of credentials, uh, certifications, and, you know, it, it's <laughs> it's like you're an outcast. You know, but hey, you got to make the best of it. Do what you got to do. And, you know, protect your family at all costs, man. And like I said, dude, Jay is a hero to me. Because he saved his kids' lives, man. Real Kids TV. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe, share it. Hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you some heat like this, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive it. And I just like to say thank you to all the people that, you know, continuously watch my videos. I'm a small channel up and coming. Um, I don't get a lot of views um, at this point. And that's fine because you know why? I don't care if I get one view, two, uh, two views, five views. I appreciate each and every person that takes the time to watch my videos. And anytime you, you know, send me a, a comment or a message, I do my best to respond back to everybody except for the the trolls man i pay them no mind you know i paid i put them on the uh pay no mind list <laughs> but um real kings tv man appreciate you until next time